There are a lot of awesome pro controllers out there for the Xbox One and PlayStation. And where a lot of this started really was back when the Xbox One first came out with the Scuf Infinity. And for a while, that was the main option Scuf had available for the Xbox One. Eventually did also offer a version that was a modified Elite. But now they finally have their official follow-up with the Scuf Prestige. Now, before we get into the in-depths of everything this controller does, what's better about it versus the Infinity, what it has to offer over its competitors, one thing I want to address real quick is the idea of a pro controller coming out this late in the Xbox One's life cycle. Because I'm sure some of you guys are seeing this video right now going like, why would I buy that when the Xbox Scarlet, or whatever they're going to call it, comes out just a year from now? And one of the main reasons why, honestly, is that Xbox One controllers aren't really Xbox One controllers anymore. I mean, think about it. Even Xbox themselves have announced a new Elite controller coming out. And the reason why is because these aren't really limited to just Xbox Ones anymore. You know, traditionally, a lot of older controllers have always been limited to just the systems that they're boxed with. And yes, there's been ways to use adapters or hacks or whatever to make things to work, but now it's got to the point where a lot of these are designed out of the box to work across a lot of different devices. Now, with some pro controller options out there, if they're designed specifically for a system, yes, they're only going to work on the system they're designed for, maybe for PC, and that's about it. With the Scuf Prestige, however, this is basically a heavily modified regular Xbox One controller, which means that everything that you uses an Xbox One controller will work with the Prestige as well. So if you want to grab this for an Xbox One, great, but just know that it's also an option for things like playing on PC, playing on Android, playing on iOS if you want to use it with your phone or an Apple TV. And Microsoft has also confirmed that their new system, whatever it's going to end up being called right now, Project Scarlet, is going to support Xbox One controllers, which I kind of have the creeping suspicion that when Project Scarlet comes out, whatever name they give it, the controller coming with it's probably going to be an Xbox One controller rebranded now for the new system, maybe with some slight updates, but we'll wait to find out on that one. Something I really want to emphasize from that list as well is the mobile phone aspect, using it with iOS and Android, because I'm sure some of you heard that and went, oh great, I could use it with my phone, why would I ever want to do that? You got to realize that Microsoft themselves are very heavily pushing this concept of cloud play. We see game streaming as a great technology, giving you access to the games that you want to play on the device that you want to play them on. It's going to be a future where if you want to play something like Gears 5 on the go, you could do that on your phone with a pro controller like this, which is an awesome idea. You'll be able to play with an Xbox One controller connected via Bluetooth. And if you don't have a controller, you'll be able to play with our touch input controls. Specialized, built from the ground up controllers for other systems are awesome, but something like this where it's using the Xbox One board and is gonna work across a very large number of devices is a very enticing prospect. And honestly, I think the right way to go if you're gonna release something this late into the cycle. So with all that said, how well does this actually work? Like I said earlier, the Scuf Prestige is a modded controller like the Scuf Infinity, though one very important difference is that the Infinity was based on the original line of Xbox One controllers that shipped with the giant VCR style one, whereas the Prestige is based on the modern models, which had the important difference of including Bluetooth. There are, however, a lot more mods and changes that Scuf has made to the Prestige compared to what the Infinity did, and it also at least just a better looking controller. The Infinity was a great controller for its time, but it definitely looked like an Xbox controller that got heavily modded. They ripped off part of the handles and put their own grips on it. They had the paddles almost looking like they were stapled to the back. This instead has an actual full body replacement, so it looks like a more put together design. This is very similar to how the PS4 Infinity was upgraded in the Scuf Impact featuring a new shell design, but in this case, it's still sticking to the same shape and grip as the Xbox One, just with some major changes. First off, one of the changes that's a little smaller, but I think is actually really important, is the grip design. Now, on the Scuf Infinity, they could just pull off this one section of the Xbox One controller and replace it with their grip, which was good, but because this is a shell design of their own, it now wraps around the entire back of the controller and relies on this small molded grip design with little hexagons, which is really comfortable and makes it very grippy. Another major change is that like their PS4 controller, the Vantage, the Prestige has the ability to just easily pull off the faceplate, which has two major uses. One, you can change the faceplate out if you like, if you want a different color. You can also change out the non-friction rings for a different color. And this is now how you can remove and swap out these stick heads. On the Infinity, you had to rely on a special tool where you put it over and twisted it, which worked, but if you lost the tool, well, it was a lot more difficult to do. But in this case, all you have to do now is take off the faceplate, remove them, super easy, no tool required. Another quality of life change that makes the Prestige a lot easier to use in the Infinity is how they handle the trigger stops and trigger tension. It's just a little hole right here that's a lot easier to access. And if you want to do trigger stops, 
That's just a switch right there. Way easier to do. Now, of course, one of the signature aspects of a scuff controller are the back paddles, and the Prestige has received some pretty good upgrades and changes. It still relies on having four back paddles in roughly the same kind of position that were on the Infinity, but they've been molded and shaped differently to make them a little more comfortable. The outer ones in particular are super easy to use because they're just right next to the grips and it's easy to get to, and they have just enough force to them that you don't accidentally click very often, but you get a really satisfying pushback whenever you want to use them. Now, something else to also notice about these compared to what was on previous designs is these large bumps right here. Now, this is a feature they used on the Vantage as well, although they were much smaller. They're a little more pronounced on the Prestige, and that serves two purposes, grippiness and tactile feel. With the grippiness, it makes sure that if you've been playing for a long time, similar to how the grip design here, make sure you don't slip off. This is making sure that if you're starting to sweat a little bit, you're going to more easily stay on the button. You're not going to slide off when you're trying to hit it. As for the tactile feel, it's a really easy way to help distinguish whether you're holding the outside ones and making sure you get that feeling that you moved from the barrier of one over to the inside ones. I will say that in general, I've always had a bit more awkwardness using the inner paddles of a scuff controller, and that's still true on the Prestige. You just find this way more comfortable than reaching onto the middle, but these light changes here in shape and the bumps have made it a better experience overall. I still don't want to map the more important buttons to the inside. I'm going to keep those out here, but these work better than previous designs. They're also now very easy to remove, so if you decide you don't like having the middle ones or one of the ones on the sides, you can just push up on them and it snaps off super easy just like that. You want to put it back on, just push it in and slide it into place. Now, if you've been looking at the back of this controller wondering what looks different about this compared to an Xbox One controller that's bothering me, it's the fact that there is no battery door because the Prestige relies on an internal rechargeable battery instead of using AA's like a standard Xbox One controller. So now you charge it just by plugging it into your system or into a wall outlet, and if on a full charge, it's going to last you 30 hours. Now, one feature that Scuf has started doing with controllers like the Vantage that did not make its way into the Prestige, because again, this is a modded controller design, not one that's built from the ground up, is that you do not have the easy ability to add or remove rumbles as you wish. On the Vantage, you could just remove the faceplate and the rumbles are right there to remove. In the case of this one, they're just stuck beneath it and there's nothing you can do about it. You can order the controller without them in the first place if you'd rather not have them there. That lightens up the controller and removes the rumble functionality entirely. But if it's ever something that you want to change on the fly, that's not an option here. It's just all or nothing. Also, unlike the Vantage, which completely got rid of relying on any kind of outside tools, the Prestige still needs a couple, although still fewer than past controllers did. You don't need to have the tool to remove the stick heads anymore, but you do still have to rely on the key for adjusting tension on the triggers and the magnetic key for remapping what buttons are mapped to which paddle. All of these updates and changes together make the Prestige flat out a way better controller than the Infinity was and a worthy replacement. But the big question a lot of people are gonna have is of course, how does it compare to the Xbox One Elite controller, especially the upcoming Elite 2? Now, obviously the Elite version 2 is not out yet. It's coming out in November, so we can't actually do any direct comparisons yet between it and the Prestige, but we can take a look at some of the focused features that each one has and where they kind of differ. As far as mainline features go, there's a lot that these two controllers have in common. They both still feature remappable back paddles. They both have swappable sticks, adjustable trigger stops, redesigned more comfortable grips, and both of these updates now have recharge battery packs. Where they differ is in how they approach some of these specific functions. For instance, the Xbox Elite Controller 2 allows you to have three different adjustable trigger stops, whereas the Scuf Prestige has two hard stop options, but also allows you to fine tune where exactly the trigger is pushing with that little turn key. So while it still has the full pull, it'll activate a lot sooner. While both controllers feature more comfortable grips, the Elite version 2 has a full wraparound design, and while both have swappable sticks, the Elite 2 also has a new feature in that you can actually adjust the tension of the sticks as well. One of the most interesting areas to compare, though, is sort of the big namesake feature of scuff controllers, and that is the back paddle designs, because they both have them, but they are designed differently. The Prestige relies on having four tabs that are all going downwards, whereas the Elite controllers have two sets that are going sideways. Now, the upside to the Elite approach is that I do find them to be a little more comfortable and easier to access all four of them. However, with the Prestige, I think you have a better sense of which paddle is which, and you're less likely to accidentally activate the wrong one, especially in a stressful situation. Again, all of this is just based on the announced features of the Elite 2. I have had a little bit of hands-on experience with it at E3, but for a real full proper comparison, we're going to have to wait until both controllers are out later this year. 
There is, however, one last important piece of comparison, and that is price points, because the Prestige is actually also offering itself as the cheaper option. Now, the thing with the Prestige is that it is a customizable order. There are things you can do that will affect the price, like whether you want certain colors or designs, whether you want to remove the brumbles, but if you do the basic set with no customization, it's going to cost $160, whereas the new Xbox Elite 2 is going to go for $180, so it's 20 bucks cheaper. I think for everything you're getting, the Prestige is at a great price, but it's going to be interesting to see how the Elite compares when it comes out later this year.